Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Be someone who cultivates a love for God's Word. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord.
Yes, Lord. Do you believe that He will reign forevermore? The title of what I'm sharing this morning is Being a Positive Person. Would you say that with me, please? Being a Positive Person. Can I ask by a show of hands, how many of you, you say, yes, I want to be a positive person? Okay, now many hands didn't go up. I don't know what it is. Maybe I can't get you to say, come on. If you want to be a positive person, raise a hand. I want to see your hand. Okay, fantastic. For those six people that didn't raise their hands, you might be in the wrong service. <laughs> now, today we're going to look at two verses of Scripture. Please turn to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 8 and 9 from Philippians 4. Now, there are five aspects that I want to touch on right now this morning. And uh, the first one is, we have a choice, choose to be a positive person. Would you say that with me right now? We have a choice, choose to be a positive person. You see, we need to know this, that we always have a choice regarding what we think about. Don't believe the lie that you're a victim of whatever gets thrown at you. I do realize that there's negative news media. There's lots of negative stories going around that we face, and it is not so easy to stay on top, but we can, and we can make a choice for what is right. Society tends to promote bad news. Oftentimes, it's sensational bad news because, I don't know, it sells more than anything else. They sell that instead of good news. Paul understood this battle, this propensity in the human heart towards negativity, and that's why Paul wrote from Philippians 4, 8, he says there's certain things that you meditate on, and the result will be that the peace of God will be with you. So I wanna tell you, Paul's words are so relevant for today. Anybody can dwell on negatives. It's the natural default of the natural mind. But it takes discipline, folks, and it takes character to fill your mind with positive things. And do you know, as you choose to fill your mind with positive things, you become a nicer person to be around. <laughs> your family enjoys you more. Your people around you enjoy you more. And some people are thinking now, if only my dad would listen to this because he's such an old grumpy grouch or, or maybe you're thinking if my, if my sister could just hear this, she's such a moan pot or whatever. But realize we want to be a blessing. We want to be a fragrance of God. And as you choose positive thoughts, it affects your well-being, but it affects your family. Perhaps your family and your home environment might be a little bit toxic. I want to tell you, it doesn't have to be toxic. It can be a source and an environment of what is good. Listen to the statement, the human mind will always set itself on something. We have to decide what that setting will be. Isn't that true? And I do realize that life is not perfect, I get it. There will always be things that we can complain about, but there will always as well be blessings that we can count. I heard the story of a lady. She's a Christian lady driving along and driving in the suburbs and next thing she has an accident, wasn't a very major one and she smashed up the front of her car. She pulled off to the side of the road. She jumped out of the car and she said, thank you Lord. Now why would you say thank you to God straight after having an accident? Because she realized it could have been so much worse and she made a decision in that moment that I'm gonna rejoice in God. I'm fine, I wasn't damaged, my car will get fixed. Wow, what kind of a mindset is that? That's a Philippians 4, 8 mindset. Even when you've had an accident, you can say, well God, thank you. Thank you for your protection. Thank you that I wasn't physically injured. Number two, when we dwell on negatives, we limit our potential. Say this with me. When we dwell on negatives, we limit our potential. Now, obviously, nobody wants to be a failure in life. We all want to succeed. We all want to do well. But when we are negative, we start to speak ill of ourselves. We start to think destructive thoughts. We beat ourselves up. And we are actually hindering our growth. 
and our ability to grow. We are stifling our potential. Negativity is really bad for us. It stunts your growth. And I want to encourage you that you begin to pay attention to the kinds of conversations that you're having with people. And you might notice how harmful they often tend to be. And we have to start to look for more intentional good conversations. And when you're part of a conversation, try to be a positive instigator in the things that have been spoken about. I want to ask you this question. Have you ever noticed that we allow self-defeating thoughts in our minds. Think about that. We allow a lot of self-defeating thoughts. And this is actually a strategy of the enemy because if he can plant these thoughts into your mind and then you entertain them, you end up beating up yourself and the devil doesn't have to beat you up. (laughs) And in that sense, we become our own worst enemies. Now, in terms of this, some people argue, well, John, I'm not negative. I'm just realistic. I'm not negative. I am just authentic. But folks, as cool as that may sound, it actually doesn't fly because we don't take our cue from cool sounding statements. We take it from the Word of God, and that is the Philippians 4, 8 principle. Very important. We take it from that. And let me also say that it's fine to be real about a situation, but then we need to choose hope. Paul, not Paul, um, David in the Bible, he was brilliant at being real about what he faced. But time and time again, after being real about, Lord, I'm struggling, Lord, why have you left me? Why do I feel abandoned? He would take it into hope. And that is the important thing. You can be real, but take it into hope and choose hope, choose lovely, choose good report, choose praiseworthy. And so we need to, some of us, change our focus because we don't want to limit our potential through negative thinking. Number three, negative thoughts generate depressing feelings. Good thoughts increase our well-being. Have you found that in your own life? And it is backed up by Proverbs 23, verse seven in the King James, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you think good thoughts, your well-being will just begin to rise. But if you think undesirable thoughts, you will become discouraged. You know, sometimes you can have a person who's battling with despair, depression, and negativity, and they come and meet with a Christian counselor, and they're just in a bad way. But in that session with a good Christian counselor, 45 minutes to an hour later, they can walk out feeling distinctly better. Yes, they've shared some of their issues and concerns and worries, but that counselor has helped to direct their thoughts to life and peace, and as a result, they begin to feel a whole lot better. And if they can walk out of that session and try their best by the grace of God to apply more of this thinking of life, thinking of hope, thinking of peace, they will experience more victory. But it's amazing how a completely discouraged person can spend an hour with a person whose mind is healthy and they walk out feeling differently. Now, if I was to mention to you a bunch of bad thoughts, negative thoughts this morning, you would, within a few moments' time, you would start to feel like, hey, this is a bit heavy. Church isn't so lacking this morning. (laughs) But conversely, if I was to share with you a bunch of good thoughts, you would start to feel, just in a few moments, you would start to feel a lot better. Allow me to give you 10 good thoughts. Can I do that? Can I have hands up? Okay. 10 good thoughts that I wanna share with you and imagine that these are thoughts that you are declaring. Here are 10 good thoughts. God has great plans for me. I have a good memory. You know, I've noticed some people say, I can never remember names. My mind is like a sieve. I've just got such a bad memory. Well, if you keep on prophesying over that, you might just fulfill your prophecy. Why don't you rather declare, I have a good memory, because that's what God has given you. Here's another thought. I'm learning a lot through this experience. It's a good thought. I can do all things through Christ. Another thought, I am healthy 
and strong. And you declare that and you thank God for that. Another one, quite simply, I am blessed. Because we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. He has another good thought. I enjoy learning God's words. Another one, I am making progress. In life, I'm making progress. Another one, I am ready for breakthrough. What a positive thought. And the last one, I get along well with others. People just like me. <laughs> now, turn to the person next to you and say, people just like me. Tell them that. People just like me. Now, you've got to admit that positive thoughts immediately begin to affect your well-being. You start to feel a little better, a little happier, and so on. And so just imagine if you practice this more often. Just imagine the effect that it would have on your life, and you would begin to experience a greater degree of abundant life. Also, I want to say this. At times when the battle is so fierce in our minds, you have to move beyond just having positive and life-giving thoughts and you actually have to speak out the word of God. Listen to me, when the battle's very severe, you need to move beyond just thinking and you speak out the word of God, you become verbal in declaring the word of God. This is an important key and we need to learn to fight negative thoughts with positive words. The devil might say to you, you look so unattractive, you are ugly and you are no good. And then you take the word of God and you speak it out loud and you declare, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Praise the Lord. It is so powerful. The word of God in your mouth is like his word in his mouth. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. This also applies to your thought life. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And I want to declare to you that if you will sow life-giving thoughts into your mind and plant life-giving thoughts, I want to tell you, you will receive a healthy mind as a harvest. Number four, continued right thinking will result in lasting joy. Say this aloud with me. Continued right thinking will result in lasting joy. We do want lasting joy. Now, research indicates that the average person thinks about 50,000 thoughts per day. Isn't that interesting? 50,000 thoughts per day. And those thoughts can either cause you to rise or, can, or they can cause you to sink. But I wanna say that God certainly wants our thoughts to cause us to rise. He really does. And so we need to take note of the quality of our thoughts, the quality of what we're allowing in our thought lives and begin to check if it passes the Philippians 4, 8 test. And I wanna remind you, remember, you have authority over your mind. You gotta hear that. Come on, I want you to hear that a little deeper. You have authority over your mind. Don't believe you need to accept whatever the junk is that is thrown at you. God has given you authority over your mind. You can direct your mind to life and peace, and God has placed that within you. Romans 12 verse two says the following. Do not be conformed to this world, we know this well, but be transformed, here it goes, by the renewing, please say renewing, renewing. of your mind, say minds, mind. that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2 is talking about renewing the mind, but actually Philippians 4, 8 is also talking about renewing the mind. Paul understood the battle and he was helping people. And right now, today, Paul's words are still helping you to renew your mind, to meditate on things that will generate life within you. Aren't you grateful for the power of the Word of God? Aren't you grateful for the direction we receive and the help we receive? God's Word is so relevant. And I wanna suggest to you that you consider starting to begin to make positive declarations over your life. And maybe you'd like to begin your day 
by making a positive declaration. Here is one. You can declare the following. I challenge you to in the morning begin to declare this. Thank you, Lord, that today is going to be a good day. Isn't that a good declaration? Say that with me. Thank you, Lord, that today is going to be a good day. And you can say that based on the scripture where God says, I have good plans for you, says the Lord. Imagine how that might affect the start of your day. Let me tell you that the first 60 minutes of your day are crucial. The thoughts that you think in those first 60 minutes will help set your entire day on the right trajectory. And so when you get up, I wanna encourage you to begin to look at your thoughts. And as you think of what's going through your mind, if it's not wholesome, direct it to wholesome thoughts. Get it right in those first 60 minutes and you will discover in the rest of your day, the chances are far higher that you will be on a better trajectory in thinking in line with Philippians 4.8. And so we have to set our minds on the right stuff. And it says in Colossians 3 verse 2, Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. I believe that this means upgrade your thinking. Set your mind on things above. I wanna tell you there's people listening to me today, you desperately need to apply this, folks. And I wanna tell you it's not only in your own strength, but you have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you to help you and to strengthen you. It's not just in your own power, but yes, you need to make a quality decision. But the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. And so let's challenge ourselves to upgrade our thinking. Even if you may have battled for many years, you might be 55 years old listening to me today and you've battled with this all your life. This does not mean that it's the end of the road and this is the way that you will live the rest of your life. You can begin to have your mind renewed even at 55 years of age. Tell the person next to you, let's upgrade our thinking. Tell them that. Let's upgrade our thinking. Now number five, which is very brief some helpful questions that produce positive thinking. And I'm basically gonna give you four quick questions. These are questions that you can ask yourself to help uh, focus your mind on positive things. Let me give you four quick questions. The first one, what three things am I thankful for right now? That's a good thing because that's gonna help you think positive thoughts. And maybe at the lunch table today, you'd like to apply this. One by one, go around and say, what three things am I thankful for today? It'll make you feel uplifted. The second, what are three of my strengths or positive characteristics? You have three strengths at least, and list those strengths. Well, you say, well, I'm I'm pretty friendly. And I have a great sense of humor, and you begin to list things. Then the third question, who are five people who truly love me? And yes, there are at least five people that truly love you. And you begin to think of it, well, this one and this one, and actually this one also loves me, this one cares for me, and you realize, besides for God, you have people that love you. And then the last question, What three things am I looking forward to in this next week? This is really good. And you begin to think, well, I'm actually looking forward to going to gym this week. I really, I'm keen to get back into gym. Or you think, well, Wednesday night, we're gonna have life group meeting. I'm looking forward to that, that's great. You think on Friday night, we're gonna have coffee together, my friend and I, and eat some pizza. You begin to look forward to things, and and these are ways, little practical questions that can help produce positive thinking. And as I draw this to a close, I wanna say to you that you, child of God, you can develop a healthy thought life. Would you receive that? I wanna say that again. You can develop a healthy thought life because God wants the very best for you. Now go ahead and give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, you can praise him a little better than that. He wants the very best for you. Hallelujah.